Hello guys, after one week, how are you guys doing? Today, we are going to do another episode of Architect 101. Why I said one week? Because I'm trying to publish at least one video per week to this playlist. I'm going to publish other videos during the week, but to this playlist, I'm going to publish at least one video. Okay, so this is how today's episode goes. My dad used to tell me something in Sinhala, right? I'm going to uh, tell that to you, but if you don't speak in Sinhala, don't worry, I'm going to translate this to you. This is how it goes. Yamek dannede, danna bava nodannede, he modeki. Yamek nodannede, nodanna bava nodannede, he modeki. Yamek nodannede, nodanna bava dannede, he nuanateke. This is how it goes. If there is a person, if he don't know about something and also he don't know that he don't know, he's a fool. And also, if there is a person, he know about something and he don't know that he know, still he's a fool. But if there is a person, he don't know about something, but he know that he don't know, he's a very intelligent man. Okay, why I said that? So this is very relevant to today's episode. Okay, so this is uh, what you're going to do today. So what is the architectural thinking? So last video we discussed architectural thinking is not just think about architecture. For example, we discussed if you if you are, if you have someone who has a high uh, high temperature, high body temperature, we see this as a fever, but doctors see this as an infection. If you go outside and look at the sky, we will just see stars. But if astrophysicists go and look at the sky, they don't just see the stars. They see they identify planets, stars separately, galaxies and asteroids and so many things, right? Because they see in different eye. So that like that, architectural thinking is you should look at the thing, you should look at the problem in the architectural eye. It is not that you just thinking about architecture. Your your the way you look at the problem is different, right? That's why we explained last time how software engineers see a problem and how architects see a problem is a two different. Why? Because architecture see a problem in the architectural eye. But the sad side is most architects used to think the being architect is thinking about the architecture, uh, worrying about the architecture, fine-tune the architecture. No, being an architect means you look at every single problem in the architect point of view. Today we are going to talk about technical breadth. Why technical breadth is important than the technical depth for an architect. So if you take a software engineer, what we expect him from software engineer? If I work with a Java engineer, I expect him to know about everything about Java. Right, concurrency handling, exception handling, best practices, and how JVM works, how those, uh, how the best practices of objective handling, variable handling, uh, instance creation, instance variable, how the instance variable works, and everything in depth about Java. Right? If I work with the front end developer, I expect him to know about sessions and session handling, the best practice of session handling, local storage, what to do and what not to do, CDN and everything in depth about his area. But when you work as an architect, more than the depth, you need to have a breadth, right? That doesn't mean in any manner you shouldn't have a depth, right? You should be expertise on certain areas, but more than the expecting on a one area, you have to be uh, breadth your knowledge about the other areas. You should know these are exist. That doesn't mean you should be master, right? This is how it goes. If you build uh, this as a triangle or a pyramid, this knowledge as a pyramid, the topmost part would be the things you know very well, right? That is your depth, okay? The first part of the pyramid is the things you know most. These, those are your expertise. The next level of the pyramid is little tricky. That part we call know as you know, but you don't know. For example, if you haven't worked on a database for a like in deep level, you may understand the database wrong. For example, you may think if you have a multiple uh, join query, you have an idea. This is how this join query works, right? This is how you can improve this join query. This is how the best practice about the query. If you didn't study that very well, if you didn't study the theory of a query, how if you if you didn't look at the query analyzers, query planners, and if you didn't try to understand those, you don't know the depth of that. So you understand maybe wrong. That means you know and you think you know it, but you really don't know it. The other part of that pyramid, the third part of the pyramid 
is that you know this is exist but you don't know how that works that means you know it exists you don't know you're an intelligent man for example if you only work on a front end if you only work on a uh, back end you may know something like a blockchain is exist right you may know something like uh, generative ai is exist you know you may know something like a crypto is exist but you don't know how those works you know how to deal with those you know what can do with those right but you know there is something like this there's something like a blockchain it's good it's like a new generation it's like a new way of uh, processing things it's, it's it's high secure but that's all you know you limit limited there so that is the third part of the pyramid which says you know it is excess but you don't know about it the last part is you don't know that is exist right so there is something you don't know about it and even you don't know that is exist so if in a software engineer in this pyramid we are looking we are expecting the first portion of the pyramid right that the the things you know about it and we are expecting you to know that very deep that is your depth for architect also that is your depth but when you become an architect you need to try to bleed this first part to the next uh, uh, compartment of the pyramid why because things you don't know you need to learn a little bit for example you need to read about the blockchain you need to do some POCs about it you if, if you don't know about the cryptography you need to do some um, reading about it some POs is about this what is the TLS what are the different versions of TLS right how these uh, cryptography works right and the, what is it is it the same as a cryptography and a cryptocurrency and the blockchain what are the relationship why we say blockchain is very secure you need to dig a little deeper and learn about it that doesn't mean you have to have a full-fledged uh, blockchain implementation or something like that but it's better you learn it so what we do is uh, we are trying to expand our knowledge from the you know about to the compartment of things that you don't know right and that is the way you expand your technical breadth right so let's say for example you knew redis very well and now you are you are exploring what are the other cache mechanism is there any uh, faster than the redis is there any different protocol we can use so see you are expanding your breadth so when you design a, your new problem, when you look at the your new problem in an architectural view, you can think, ah, okay, he, this is what you're fitting there. But you don't know how to use it. It's totally fine. You can find a team who can use it, but you can make the design based on the your knowledge, using your knowledge, right? And eventually, when you expand in this first uh, compartment to the second one, you're expanding things you know, you are, you are like uh, bleeding into the things you don't know and eventually you're going to explore things you didn't know that exist right so when you let's say probably you're following a course or you are watching a video or you are reading a blog post or you are in a white paper that has a reference saying oh, okay something like this is exist right something called a neural network is exist so we need to train this in a neural network model so now ah okay you go and see what is a neural network what just happened you discovered something you didn't know that was exist, right? So you can see when you become an architect, your time should spend more than you deeply dive into a certain technology rather than you exploring what is existing in the world. What are the other things existing which I don't know?